let's look at the third and final category of these guillotine or news chokes, as I like to call them. They are really efficient. They're fairly easy to learn. Um, the next category are our figure four versions. Now the benefit of these is I don't need to have my hips under my arms. The power of my arms does the choke, which allows me to sprawl back, pull the guy to the ground. Later you'll see these as part of uh, tackle defenses, things like that. But right now I just want to look at the mechanics to show you another way of powering them, powering the choke. So the difference is, instead of using my hips to pull up or putting them in the center, I'm going to use my hands here. The two basic versions are to do it this way or this way, okay, with either my hands figure forward. Now, first of all, I'm putting my hand a little to the left here to give him a little bit of breathing room. But basically, you want to get his arm in here and get as tight as you can. I want my elbows close together. It's just it's really tight in his neck, and I want to be careful. I don't want him to pass out while we're talking here. It'd be kind of embarrassing for the poor guy to wake up and wonder if we finished. So, but the idea is I want this hand as deeply through as we did for the, for the first noose the standard one. Then instead of grabbing here, I'm going to post as close to his neck with the second hand, and then we figure four like this. And I want to get this figure four as deeply over as I can. The more my wrist bends like this, the more leverage I'm, I'm losing. Now, to make sure that my partner doesn't pass out while we're talking, I'm going to figure four a little off like this. But remember, the closer you can get it, the tighter it's going to be. And this also brings your elbow closer to you. There's more leverage. So once I'm here, take the time and work this hand here. He's already beginning to choke. The thing about this is I can sprawl right back. Go on your knees for a moment here. And you're going to support my weight because I'm going to lean back. So just, yeah, just go on all fours. That's perfect. Okay. The difference with this kind of choke is I don't need to have my hips under me. I can choke him from here. All right. Unlike the other two types, I need to have my hips underneath the choke to power. With this kind, I can be way back. So if he actually is able to hit me in the groin or he's trying to tackle me, that kind of figure four noose is really, really effective. Let's take a look at the details here. Really, there's just two two grip variations, all right? I've shown you the first one, which is a basic figure four. Make space here, jam him away, and oh. bring this one in, okay? The second variation, it's just tighter because I put a fist here. Instead of grabbing like this, I'm gonna put my fist on top of my wrist like this. There's a couple of advantages to that, but the main one you need to know about is that the choking surface becomes thinner and harder. It's the thumb side bone of my forearm instead of this part and then turning it in, I use this. All right, so that's your, your two grip variations. This one's a little easier on his neck. So remember, I need to squeeze in and then take this hand and climb it up and roll. Make a, a rolling action like this, which drives it in. The advantage of this is I don't need to be standing with him. I can actually sprawl my weight back, smash his head into the ground as I apply the choke, and I can be you know, basically perpendicular to him, head to head with my legs back far, which would take my groin out of the equation if you're really worried about that. And it'll, it's actually a little, a little tighter and faster 